Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Auto Programming Using Scala. We've been looking at uh, sorting algorithms, and we've talked about bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. Uh, in order to verify these sorts in the previous videos, I sorted a small number of, of values and then looked at them to check to see if they were all in the right order. Uh, and of course, the reality is that humans are quite fallible. I could miss things, um, and in particular, since I was sorting doubles, the way the doubles print out makes it a little bit challenging for me to really tell if, if they're in the right order. Uh, so I want to briefly write a little uh, function where we can pass it an array that we think is sorted and have it tell us whether or not it is. So we'll go back to the same code that we had written before. We have our bubble sort, our min sort, and our insertion sort. And what I want to write is a function that will test if an array is sorted. And we've been working with arrays of doubles so far, so I will continue that. And really this isn't a very uh, challenging routine, though we can write it in many different ways, and in fact maybe that's uh, a good thing for you to, to see. Um, so I'll probably create at least three versions of this. The way that probably comes to your mind first is to use a loop. And so um, if I do something like this for i in 0 until arr dot length minus 1, because, well, yeah, because my, my approach to this is I'm going to take each element of the array. So if my array, you know, for example, had 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. I want to look at each element and compare it to the element after it and make sure that it is less than or equal to because you know, it is possible to have something like that. There are You are allowed to have ties. Um, and so I just want to make sure that each element is less than or equal to the element after it. So I could have this for loop go through and it goes until the length minus 1. And what I want to do is I want to do a check. Well, if arr sub i is greater than arr sub i plus 1, well, this means this failed. Uh, it was not sorted. How could I indicate that? I'm going to introduce for this method a var. It's called ret, short for return. And then when we're done, I will return that. Now, I have to admit, I'm not really all that happy with this test sorted. I'm not happy with it for, for a number of reasons. Um, one is that I used a var. The other is, even if the first pair, even if the, the array is not sorted in the first element, this for loop's going to go all the way through. Okay, so it's, it's, it's inefficient, and it is, it's more imperative than I would like. I can change the efficiency problem by using a while loop instead. And in fact, it's probably worth writing that. Um, so if I were to make a test sorted 2, we'd have another var uh, for i, which starts off at 0. While i is less than arr.length minus 1. Um, and arr sub i is less than or equal to arr sub i plus 1. So I make the conditional a little bit longer in here. And then I am simply going to say i plus equals 1. Um, I no longer have a return value that I'm mutating because what I give back depends upon the value of i. If i got all the way up to arr.length minus 1, then we got all the way through the array, the array and everything was in the right order. If it didn't get there, if it ever stopped short, then we had a problem. So I'm going to just return i greater than or equal to arr.length minus 1. 
if I get to the end of the array, it's in sorted order. If I fail, if this breaks out for any reason other than getting the, to the end of the array, that's because uh, this failed and we know that our, our array is not sorted. This is more efficient than the use of a for loop here, um, but there's still a part of me that, that isn't necessarily happy with it. If, if you're fine with imperative programming, it's possible that, that the instructor that you have is fine with imperative programming. Maybe this would be viewed as an ideal situation. But I want to show you <coughs> two other uh, possible options here. So actually, I have now written over 10 lines of code. Let's go ahead and verify that I don't have any typos in there because I don't want to have huge numbers. And what I can do here is jump down here to the bottom. I'm going to make my arrays not have 200 elements but have 2,000 elements in them. Um, and I will, uh, in fact here, let me do a test sort. Um, this is going to be a slightly more interesting function. I'm going to pass it in a, a sort function and this sort function is something that takes an array of doubles and gives back unit. That is the signature of all of our sorts. That's what bubble sort does. It takes in an array of doubles and it gives us back nothing for it. And the reason I want to do this um, is simply because I don't want to have to duplicate this code a whole bunch of times. So I make my array, I perform the insertion sort, and then test sorted. Uh, and actually, wait, this won't be the insertion sort, this will be my sort func. which could be insertion sort, or it could be something else, test sorted on nums. Print line, test sort, pass it uh, bubble sort, min sort, insertion sort. Let's see if I have any typos in there. True, true, true. Okay, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So how would I, it, for more of a functional approach to this, how might we go out, go about writing a different test sorted? Well, one way of doing this is to realize that what I'm doing is I'm comparing each element of the array with the one after it this just all goes away. Um, and I can build a collection that has that in there by doing arr uh, dot zip arr dot tail. And so this gives me a, uh, a an array of tuples and each element of the tuple has one element followed by the next element um, in the array. And then I want to return true if for all of these tuples t, t dot underscore one is less than or equal to t dot underscore two. Okay. If I change this, use test sorted three, we still get all of our trues. Um, note, not only is this significantly shorter than that, uh, it, uh, it also, there are no bars anywhere. The one problem with this version is it's also extremely inefficient. Uh, turns out that arrays do not have a fast tail method and zipping is going to, to do a lot of work on there. Um, so we kind of gave up, this is a very efficient version. It's very imperative, but it's very efficient. We could improve this version by using zipped instead of zip. Uh, but we would still have the uh, array.tail 
Uh, technically, we could use a view for that. So there are some advanced techniques that we could use that would give us more efficient implementations, uh, but we won't go through those in this video. We'll come back next time, and we'll look at how we can visualize the sorts that we've written.